All right, that's been 10 seconds for me. It may have been a day or two for you. We're back at it with another factor that affects the decisions we make around buying things, and that is jobs. You, okay, I don't know many kids that think about this as a, as a decision-making factor for whether or not they're going to buy a product, but buying products does in fact create jobs locally as well as abroad. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so when you buy a pen, you go, or when you buy pretty much anything, you buy a sweater, you buy a new pair of shoes, you buy a new car. There are there there are people that are involved in the selling of that product that you don't necessarily think about a ton. So for instance, in a car, there's a salesman, there's a finance guy, there's a there's the uh, there's a person that actually owns the business. This is, and this is actually true, you know, for most big purchases. This isn't limited to cars. Uh, if you're buying a house, if you're buying a a new bicycle, I don't know. I I love I love bikes. If I'm going to go buy a bike, there's you know Dean that owns Ernie's. Dean and his family own Ernie's, and today in Grand Prairie, it's like my only choice for going to buy a bike. But there are people that he has on staff in the finance department. So if I want if I want to, I can actually finance a bike through them. And they have people that are trained to do that. There are people that are there for the maintenance side of bikes that they have. There are people that are there uh, to uh, actually do the sell selling of the bike. There's a buyer. There's a guy that they contact. I, I have a friend of mine and he works for Norco. And his job actually, Clint's job is to go uh, from town to town, I think he works for Norco. Uh, his, his job is to go from town to town and bring Norco bikes to do, you know, sales to the different stores, and it's crazy. But he actually goes and he'll bring Norco bikes. He has a he has a van that has like a bike rack, and he'll put bikes in there and he'll bring them to, you know, uh, what's it called? What's a ski hill? Nighthawk. He'll bring bikes to Nighthawk uh, to be demoed by, by you guys and you guys can go for a ride on a Norco bike and think about whether or not the stuff on that bike is better than the specialized bike, than the other bike. And he will do that sort of stuff. That's his day-to-day -day job. So there are people involved in every different thing that you buy that you just don't think about. Um, I know my sister, uh, when she used to work for Manhattan, they used to go to um, call. They used to go to different. I want it like a trade show, where they would be able to go and see uh, the new lines are coming out, and they're not quite like fashion shows, but they're fairly similar. Uh, I'd be able to see what the new lines coming out from these different products are uh, that they were uh, already selling, and then they would be try. Then companies would try and uh, get people to come and buy their products and sell this new product line in their store. So that's going on there's you know the transportation of everything today these guys hilariously enough just thinking about covid stuff the people that work at the store they're essential workers nowadays especially if it's a grocery store if it's a clothing store most of those have shut down but the transportation workers they're the only people when when you look at the way that they've shut the border down between canada and us one of the main things that they said, well, sh we're shutting the border down for just visitors, but they're not shutting it down for people that are moving goods between the two countries to keep the two countries' economies afloat. So transportation workers are now viewed as essential employees, essential workers. <clears throat> uh, factory workers, people that are actually in the manufacturing of it, the people that are going and getting the goods uh, out of the ground that are going to go to making it as well as the people that are involved in the other side of whatever that product is. Uh, so the actual manufacturing of those goods, everything kind of, if you look at it, everything is flowing uphill to the eventual product that you buy. So there, there are jobs associated with you buying that product. Now, for some of us, Probably down here we look and say, is this product made in Canada? Is it is that Canadian thing important to you or not? Um, I don't make I'm not making any value judgments if you don't think it is that important to you. 
But for some people it is. They, they want to make sure that all of these lower jobs here are happening in our country. I mentioned earlier on in another video about uh, Heinz ketchup uh, selling out and then eventually French is coming in. And I, I am that kind of person where I will only buy something if I know I'll buy something local as opposed to from far away. Um, this, this is such an important question. Um, when, when like right now we're seeing an economic recession and the natural tendency is for people to go and take their, take what they have and like, you know, put under their bed and like hold on to as much as they can. But one of the big drives inside of All right, I'm back. Sorry, my furnace is turned on and it gets loud in here when they are on. Um, but this is a real thing, the consumer spending and economic growth. Like there are people that really feel like these are absolutely tied together that in the moments where uh, the economy kind of takes a hit like we're currently going through, the number one way to drag us out of economy is actually to increase consumer spending. So I know this is, this is a more... Um, that perspective is a more right-leaning economic perspective. I think that's fair to say. I don't think anyone will get angry at me about that because I know that uh, during the during a previous recession or a previous dip in uh, in stuff, conservative mind conservative minded uh, policy said, "Let's make an economic stimulus package so that we can." Um, increase consumer spending so they actually created a home renovation uh, tax credit so that people would go out and spend money uh, not just on goods but also on services provided by people to go and actually you know renovate your basement or something like that so there there was money put in and that is something that uh, has been successful in the past to create economic stimulus so that people will be more free with their spending as opposed to just going and burying their money in a jar in the backyard, which I realize that sounds ridiculous, but one of my dad's uncles literally did that. He would take his money, he didn't trust banks, and he would bury his money in jars in his backyard. And then when he wanted to go buy something, he would go and he had a map of his backyard of where he had put jars so that he could go and dig up uh, these jars and be able to go and buy something, whatever it was. So he didn't trust people. And so he was very much like, you know, ah, things are happening. Put money in the ground. Don't put it in a bank. The bank can fail, which isn't entirely unfair at times. There are, there have been banks that have, uh, during the 3030s, during the uh, Great Depression, that was a real thing that happened was banks failed. Uh, we haven't seen anything like that to this point. We did see during the uh, 2010-ish era, uh, there was really bad mortgages that were given out to people that shouldn't have qualified for mortgages. Anyways, sometimes spending is a good thing to help drive the economy out of whatever it may be stuck in. So... Um, the environment may be a very real thing that you are you care about. I know Sun Chips, one of the things they advertise is that their bags are 100% biodegradable. So they want you to look at their bags and say, oh, I can have this snack that I like, which I do love Sun Chips. But, you know, when I'm done with a bag, it's not going to create plastic that, you know, takes thousands of years to decompose and to get, to you know, turn it back into base elements. Uh, instead, I can buy these sun chips and in a matter of a couple of uh, years, it's gone from being a plastic-ish material to carbon and other base products that can be recycled and reused in the environment. Uh, but the environment is a thing and some of you guys, again, I would put you guys on a continuum. How many of you guys would say the environment is a very important decision and how many of you guys would say that environment is not something you really consider? Uh, and there is no judgment on that spectrum. It's not like if you say, I think the environment is very important to consider, we're going to all of a sudden, you know, chastise you and you have to wear a 
green hat and we get to mock you for the rest of the year uh nor is there you know if you're on the other side is there something where we just yell at you and tell you that you're terrible for the environment there's i'm not here to go and like judge one way or the other but it is for some people a very big concern um the environment is one of the number one things they think about when they make economic decisions um it it just you don't think about it until you do. And when you start thinking about it, you become very aware that some of the things that we buy are not like they're, they're kind of ridiculous the way that they're packaged. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah. And again, just like everything else, being a centrist country, country, there are laws that have been created around the environment and we're seeing like the stuff they have here is minimal compared to what we're seeing today. Like we're seeing carbon taxes and things like that being put in place and, and imposed on people. Uh, and whether you agree with it or not, that's not what the discussion really is, but the environment is something that is a fairly hot button issue. I mentioned that earlier on, um, and it is a very real concern for some people, less so for other people. Um, again, I'm not here to judge you or say right or wrong, but it is a very real concern. So, um, yeah, environment is one of the things I actually, I hate this, but one of the things I know, uh, I have family who works in the oil industry and I have a friend of mine who does tree planting. And one of the things he had to do, uh, about four years ago is he, his company, his tree planting company got hired as one of the companies to go and reclaim land that was a uh, one of the oil sands mines. And they had a plan, they had it landscaped. Like, we're not talking just toss a bunch of seed out and hope that it grows and turns back into, you know, natural environment. No, they had been collecting seeds and they had been growing stuff to be able to go and take this, a mine that looked fairly similar to this, and they turned it, like I talked to him afterwards and he said that the landscaping that they did, the types of trees that they were asked to bring in were, they were asked to consider the natural population of bears and those kinds of things that they expected to come back in and deer that they would see uh, in and around the environment. And they were asked to create uh, areas so that they could, uh, specific trees that they were asked to plant and bring in uh, saplings for so that uh, all the different populations would be, their needs would be met. And he said that, that even though I hate, like I realize hate, I hate the look of this, the really well done things like we do in Canada, we do, though the oil sands is something that people hate outside of Canada, we do it at an exceptional level. Okay, we do oil sands so well and we turn it back into something like he said that when he looked at the area that they were going to landscape and turn into this, not a park, but just a natural area, return back to nature. He said it was so much nicer than the stuff that was just down the road and it would have created a, an environment that would allow for animals to both move and feel safe and secure and protected as well as, you know, he said it was just unreal what they had to do and the amount of money that was spent by Suncor or whoever it was to go and return that land back to nature was obscene. Um, Last factor, and this one is huge, is marketing. And we're gonna do an assignment on this uh, around marketing. And you're going to have to become a marketing agent and sell a product using some of the advertising uh, things that we're going to do next week. So I will leave it at that. Um, I hope you're excited about this. this. This is actually one of the really fun things. I'm gonna put up a PowerPoint for you that you're going to look at various different ridiculous products and you're going to have to pick a product and create an advertisement for it. Uh, it could be a print advertisement or any number of things, but we're going to talk about this and we're going to talk about ways that uh, advertisement actually goes and elicits a response from you to go and get you to buy stuff. So I'm not going to go too far into that, but this is a very real thing, but I'm going to leave that for next week. So I'll see you guys later. Have a good day.
sehr.